with our uh, Indian universities, and uh, we, we we are here today. So, and you, you've seen. Come back tomorrow and speak on that as well. So uh, <laughs> support. <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, what I uh, sort of want to uh, do is before getting into uh, the political economy of uh, public-private uh, partnership, I thought I'd uh, wear my uh, chemical engineering hat and uh, sort of walk you through uh, the 101 hydrological context in which uh, all of this is actually playing out because that uh, on the ground context of what urban hydrology is about is crucial to understanding some of the really interesting things that came out of uh, the Aurangabad uh, case, for example. Right? I mean, some of the uh, key hydrological uh, underpinnings of why these projects fail. Right? I mean, there, there's a physical, biophysical basis for why uh, public-private partnerships, at least the way we uh, understand it uh, today, uh, simply uh, would not work in the context of uh, Indian cities. Uh, I'm going to uh, speak from uh, my own uh, work in the last uh, five or six years, as, as you'll see, uh, on the byline uh, with multiple collaborators, multiple uh, institutions, uh, including A3, uh, from where you will uh, hear the next uh, presentation. Uh, what I uh, sort of want to uh, emphasize here is the social hydrology part. I mean, I mean essentially making the case for why uh, one of the central problems, conceptual problems in how we look at uh, urban water uh, conundrums in India, be it through public or private or public uh, private, is we use a techno-economic lens, right? And even as a engineer, I'm going to try and uh, make the case that all hydrology is really social hydrology, uh, if not uh, political hydrology, and we need to uh, sort of uh, pay attention. So let me uh, jump right in. Uh, well, this is hydrology as my uh, kindergarten uh, daughter understands it. This is from her uh, Montessori uh, classroom. There's really only this so much to uh, hydrology. I mean, hydrologists spend, uh, we spend a lot of time trying to uh, put numbers into uh, this picture, uh, but there's something crucial that is missing from this picture. And, and, and especially in the context of urban hydrology. If you stared enough at this picture, you would recognize that there are no people. Right? So where are the uh, people? And, and people actually change this picture completely. Right? And, uh, and we've, we've had a uh, uh, morning session on the history of the uh, World Bank and uh, McNamara was uh, specifically uh, cited, one of my uh, favorite quotes from McNamara is when he took over uh, as uh, the leader of the World Bank, he said, this is no uh, different from what I'd been doing at Ford Motor Company or the Department of Defense, that after beyond a certain scale, uh, all problems uh, start looking alike. And I'm going to try and uh, bring in that uh, scale problem, and that scale problem comes because uh, there are a lot of people. Uh, in the case of Bangalore, we are talking about uh, 10 million plus people uh, doing something in the background. So this picture isn't really uh, the picture uh, that you are seeing, right? So uh, just to give you a broad uh, sort of hydrological uh, perspective on what we are looking at in uh, Bangalore, uh, Bangalore is a very large city. Uh, it's 750 uh, square kilometers approximately. Uh, so the, I'm, I'm not going to get into the details of how rainfall measurements are done across this large uh, landmass, etc. But approximately short term average, again, let's not get into the nuances, 850 millimeters per year. That translates to about 1700 million liters a day of water. Right? So that's that is my daughter's picture. Right? I mean, that's, that's what is being circulated in the uh, background. Absent 10 million people, uh, you will have 1700 million liters a day as the driving uh, force behind uh, the urban hydrology of Bangalore. But then we have 10 million people. So what do we do? We import 1400 million liters a day of water, right? And uh, following last week's uh, Supreme Court judgment, that's actually now going to be exactly 1750 MLD, right? So sometime uh, next year, uh, the engineering infrastructure 
is actually going to overwhelm the natural hydrological cycle. <coughs> right? So infrastructure is going to create a circulation of about 1,750 million liters a day. Compare, juxtapose that with 1,700 million liters a day of natural uh, background uh, uh, hydrological uh, cycle, and now you get the uh, complexity of uh, what uh, we are uh, talking about. And of course, I'll, I'll get into uh, how much groundwater we might be extracting, uh, recharge rates, uh, so on and uh, so forth. And all of these things are uh, complicated, but uh, really, this is the uh, summary slide, if you will. Right? I mean, uh, as as human-produced infrastructure, we are really replicating the natural hydrological cycle. 1,700 million liters a day here, and 1,700 million liters a day uh, over there. Okay, right, so uh, I want to uh, sort of uh, use the lens of uh, metabolism, and uh, I mean, I call it the metabolic uh, urbanism. Uh, they're, they're two very different maps, and uh, each of these maps are incomplete. The first one is, of course, the uh, political map, uh, the uh, census population in 198 uh, wards of Bangalore, and the map on the right is the groundwater uh, quality map. Right. So what I sort of want to do is understand the linkages between these two. Right? I mean, how is uh, the political producing the biophysical, and how is the biophysical a constraint on uh, all the uh, political stuff that's uh, happening, right? Okay, uh, top metabolism, you're uh, beginning to imagine a city as a uh, living organism, so we'll move from a Montessori classroom into a uh, second grade uh, classroom, so this is from my nephew. Uh, living things breathe, living things need food, excrete, uh, living things usually grow, but only for part of their lives. That's true with cities too, living things die. And this is also true of most historical cities. Right? I'm not, not going to uh, get into that. So what I'm uh, going to do is look at Bangalore, a city of 10 million people, as a living, breathing uh, organism. Right? So you're therefore uh, interested in what this living thing chews on, how does it digest, so on and so forth. Here is the problem. We understand a lot about Bangalore's circulatory system. Even when we are doing a critical analysis of public-private partnerships, for example, among the kind of discussions that have been happening around this table uh, through the day, we are focused on the circulatory system of this beast. Right? We are interested in the flow of rupee. Uh, in, in, in the context of Bangalore, we especially understand the uh, flow of dollars. Uh, circulatory system is what economics and business is interested in, and in, 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 in some sense, uh, politics too. But I am going to uh, try and suggest that hydrology is basically about the digestive system. Right? If you uh, continue with this living entity uh, metaphor, what does Bangalore consume? What does Bangalore excrete? Right? And, 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 and in the context of Bangalore, what uh, Bangalore excretes is actually more important. Because uh, while public-private partnerships might be a pipe dream, a mirage on the water side, Public-private partnerships are already there, uh, alive, kicking, not so well, on the sink side. Right? So what happens to water after uh, we've used it? Right? 2018 is uh, less than 60 days old, and already seven people have died uh, trying to clean our shit in Bangalore. Right? And, uh, and, 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 and all of these are a direct consequence of a certain kind of public-private partnerships that uh, underlie uh, the same side of the problem uh, from an engineering uh, perspective. Right, so metabolic flows, I mean, food, energy, water, you're basically looking at two parts, right? So you have a resource flowing in and then you have a degraded uh, waste flow. I mean, that, that's what defines a uh, metabolic uh, flow. In the case of water, Right, so what I have within parenthesis there is the Bangalore water and water supply and sewerage board. Right, so water problem really cannot be uh, isolated from the sewerage problem. I mean, if you want to understand water, you have to uh, got to uh, deal with the uh, sewerage uh, problem as well. All right, uh, three ways to. I'm going to in, in this very brief sort of presentation uh, run through three ways to slice this problem. Uh, we'll talk about 
some questions around justice. So in, in terms of the metabolic flow, you're then asking how was this metabolic flow distributed between uh, different people uh, in the uh, city, right? And, and then we'll, we'll actually ask the question, uh, of what volume of flow is actually biophysically sustainable? Right? I mean, when can, can we go from uh, 1400 MLD to 1700 million liters a day to uh, so on and so forth? And then finally, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make uh, some comments on uh, economic uh, efficiency as well, right? And, and I'd like to sort of uh, uh, start off by giving you the summary. I mean, if, if I were a uh, doctor, and I, I, I put the slide in also because uh, this is a mode of social science inquiry that was uh, really pioneered uh, by the founding director of this institute. Uh, and one of J.M. Kumarappa's uh, uh, conceptions of social science was social scientists, you ought to be more uh, doctors than uh, scientists. Right? I mean, you're, you're trying to diagnose a, a problem. Uh, the political economy of distribution is fraught with inequities, multiple uh, dimensions. Uh, metabolic flows are not sustainable, and uh, the flows are not uh, efficient either. And we'll see why uh, that is the uh, case. Uh, just to give you a brief uh, uh, snapshot for those of you who are not uh, familiar with uh, Bangalore, uh, the current population is about uh, 11 million. Uh, just to set the context in terms of just how unprecedented uh, this growth is, uh, Bangalore of 2011 is approximately Bangalore of 2001 plus Chennai of uh, 2004. Right, so that's, that's the pace at which uh, uh, the uh, city has uh, grown. Of course, uh, this is what uh, maps look like. I'm going to have an older slide. Uh, I have a 2016 slide, which is all, uh, all red, so it's, it's, it's built up uh, area. But city hasn't obviously grown uniformly. Right? And, and this is going to be uh, crucial, because there is a uh, infrastructure uh, mismatch. Uh, I mean, for all the justice problems that we've been uh, uh, looking at in terms of uh, public-private partnerships, I mean, I've, I've heard uh, uh, people talk about uh, how uh, some of the uh, earlier uh, concerns with uh, very, very extractive uh, structures coming back in uh, new Gulf, uh, the spatial distribution of growth and uh, where people live and who lives where are going to be a uh, really crucial uh, question. Right? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll try and uh, show you why, at least in the context of uh, Bangalore, uh, it is not quite uh, really uh, so much classical uh, uh, accumulation by dispossession as much as it is uh, accumulation by contamination. Right? I mean, so I mean, in a sense, the actual accumulation process is by uh, contaminating certain areas. But in order to be able to sustain an engine that operates uh, on the basis of accumulation by contamination, you need segregated spaces. Right? I mean, you have to segregate uh, spaces so that you can selectively uh, contaminate a, uh, a certain part of the uh, city. So I'll, I'll, I'll bring in those uh, features. Uh, later, but broadly uh, uh, speaking, uh, the periphery of the city has grown much more rapidly. Indeed, uh, there are uh, central parts of the cities that have even experienced negative growth, and these are growth rates between uh, 2001 census and uh, 2011 uh, uh, census. Right. So the, uh, this is. Uh, I mean, I, I can show this to you uh, via night lights. Uh, any, any which way. Uh, Bangalore is somewhat uh, peculiar because uh, the uh, growth has happened more or less uniformly across the city. Right. So it's, it's grown in every uh, direction. This, this is essentially growth rate uh, measured from the uh, population weighted uh, centroid of the. Uh, city in uh, different uh, direction. Uh, so as you can uh, see, the uh, po population centroids have barely moved. Uh, less than a uh, 200 uh, meter uh, movement between 2001 and uh, 2011. Uh, so that in 2001, we didn't have a single ward above uh, 40,000. In 2011, uh, all wards had at least uh, 40,000 people. We have 198 uh, wards. Uh, quick overview of our uh, public 
uh, uh, utility piped uh, infrastructure. Uh, we get water from River Kaveri. Uh, Bangalore gets uh, water from a river that is uh, uh, about uh, 100 kilometers away. And uh, even more uh, significantly, uh, half a kilometer below the city. Right? So we are actually pumping uh, water, uh, soon 1,700 million liters a day of water, uh, across a gradient of half a kilometer. So there's, there's a uh, significant uh, energy cost to uh, uh, doing this. In fact, uh, uh, when our, our group has developed a metric called water return on water invested, right? For every 100 liters that you draw from the uh, river, uh, close to a liter and a half is gone into producing electricity needed to keep the uh, pumps uh, running. Okay, uh, so I'm going to skip over uh, some of these uh, because supply has basically uh, not kept pace with uh, population growth, but the uh, spatial characteristics are important. Right, so this is uh, Bangalore now. Uh, th these are not political divisions. These are not uh, wards in the city. These are administrative divisions of uh, the local uh, utility, public utility, the Bangalore Water Supply and uh, Sewerage Board. Uh, you can you can clearly see that the uh, supply infrastructure is spatially uh, very very uh, 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 skewed. Right, so center parts of the city get uh, most water. I'll talk about why this is not really an engineering uh, problem. We do have a grid, so in in in, in some sense uh, these things can be uh, equalized. I mean the engineering constraint and equalizing uh, this are not. Uh, insurmountable at all. Uh, but I also want to draw your attention to uh, the actual numbers, not just the relative uh, differences between the center parts of the city and the uh, peripheral areas. Even in the center, right, uh, where uh, the water uh, utility pipes are most dense, uh, the per capita consumption is 72 to 90 uh, liters per capita. The beautiful people of Bangalore are certainly consuming more than 90 liters per capita uh, per day. So what that uh, is telling you is there is not a single part of the city where water use is not mixed. Right? When there is no part of the city that relies exclusively and entirely on only uh, public uh, utility uh, supplied uh, pipe water. Pipe water is mostly all 99 point some percentage surface water. Right, so that uh, essentially means that Bangalore uses a mix of surface water and uh, groundwater, and then that 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 distinction is going to be uh, important, and the connections between surface water system and groundwater system is going to be uh, important as well. All right, <coughs> uh, the definition of what. Uh, is the administrative boundary of Bangalore as far as water supply is concerned has changed. Uh, on, your, on your left was uh, the boundary as it existed in 2013. On the right is the uh, current boundary. But there's also a little part uh, that is not seen here. Uh, we are preparing for a public-private partnership So uh, while we have shrunk. So basically through an administrative fiat, uh, Bangalore has decided that the actual peripheral areas are not going to be uh, uh, given pipe water. On the extreme right, the southeastern uh, ward that you see, for example, uh, 2011 uh, census tells us that is about 37% uh, uh, SC and ST. Right? So, um, so there is an underlying uh, 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 story uh, that we can get into uh, later, but. While peripheral areas were removed, another area was actually added. So Bangalore's uh, public water utility uh, was uh, charged with supplying water to Bangalore's electronic city, which was the Silicon Valley of uh, India. And that's, that's really not part of the administrative boundary of Bangalore, so therefore not uh, shown here. It's in the uh, southeastern uh, uh, corner. All right. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, piping uh, network. The, and, and, and the two, uh, two colors are because the uh, lighter color is the original piping network and the darker colors are the uh, piping network that was developed uh, in the last uh, six years or so. Uh, that's the Kaveri uh, stage four as uh, it is uh, called. So you can, you, you, you can, you can see where uh, 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 water 
uh, is uh, supplied. Right? So this is uh, domestic uh, metered uh, water. Uh, these are the 198 uh, uh, watts. Uh, uh, this is uh, bore well dependence, not uh, surprising at all. So if you if you don't get water uh, in the periphery, you 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 dig a well, right? So uh, I mean I mean uh, the actual numbers are uh, less important than the uh, spatial uh, distribution of uh, groundwater and uh, surface water. All right. Okay. So uh, so, uh, so here is a very simple uh, plot, right? So what I have done is plotted. Uh, population in the various uh, administrative uh, subdivisions of the public utility versus the average uh, uh, LPCD, right? So uh, this is a problem, as you can uh, see. So the infrastructure, uh, the pipe infrastructure and people uh, happen to be in uh, different places. Even more stark, if you looked, if you plotted the same uh, LPCD or liters per capita per day uh, against population growth, right? So, yeah. what are the dots then? Sorry. What are the points on? That? Uh, these are the uh, uh, different administrative uh, boundaries. So these are uh, okay, so these are these polygons. Right. Right. Yeah. So the uh, administrative regions of the public utility. Uh, okay. All right. So. And basically, uh, infrastructure uh, and uh, people are not simply aligned, right? And 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 and, and this is important because uh, this is where the demand for all kinds of public-private partnership stories come from, right? I mean, a a uh, the Japanese are uh, able to come in and say, Jaiko is going to give you money, do this because well, they're seeing this picture. Uh, the Norwegians are going to come in and say, uh, do something else because uh, they're seeing this, right? So uh, this, this picture is going to be uh, important. So putting it all uh, together, uh, this is sort of the base uh, uh, driver of uh, both hydrology and uh, political economy, right? Okay, so I'm, not, I'm going to skip over uh, how uh, the piping infrastructure in Bangalore evolved over uh, uh, several uh, years. Now let's put all of this back, uh, the uh, uh, sort of city on uh, to the biophysical uh, domain again. Uh, the little uh, blue uh, polygons that you see there are actually lakes uh, rapidly uh, vanishing in uh, Bangalore, but many of them are still uh, around, right? So if I want to sort of uh, understand what happens when you put this uh, infrastructure uh, story on top of uh, the biophysical uh, map? Okay, so let me give you a quick demonstration of uh, social uh, hydrology. Uh, on the uh, left, we have the quote unquote uh, natural state, right? I mean, you have 1700 million liters a day of uh, rainfall uh, falling over. 80% of which evaporates at around 10 degree uh, north latitude, uh, and about 10% ends up in uh, groundwater. Right? <coughs> now, of course, we don't, we, that's not the picture we are dealing with. Uh, you have not only uh, rainwater, but you're also importing water from the river. And I've, I've drawn those two arrows to be uh, of similar size because it's 1700 MLD and 1400 MLD comparable. Uh, size, you still have the same evaporation, uh, the same stream flow, uh, but what percolates into the groundwater is not only rainfall recharge, but also re leakage and uh, return flows. Right? And the pipes are leaky, and, and this is another uh, sort of uh, pipe, pipe leakage is an important uh, story, right? I mean, because that, that's a story that undergrid so much of the public discourse on uh, PPPs in the urban water sector in India, uh, I, th I think it's important to uh, uh, sort of state this up front. We have a leakage problem, but the water leakage problem is nowhere comparable to the kinds of leakage problems we talk about in the Indian electricity sector, for example. Uh, to give you a sense, 
uh, the Bangalore uh, water uh, supply infrastructure, the leakage is estimated to be uh, somewhere uh, between uh, 20 and uh, 30 percent. Uh, points of comparison, uh, Bangkok, uh, Thailand about 17 percent, uh, Tokyo, uh, Japan about uh, 15 to uh, 20 percent. So in, 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 in some senses these are just the technical uh, side of trying to create an artificial uh, hydrological system. I mean, if you're going to bring in uh, 1,700 million liters a day from 100 kilometers away and with this complicated piping network, you're going to have uh, some uh, leakage, all right? Uh, what matters for our purposes is where does that water leak, right? I mean, obviously, the, all the pipes are in the center parts of the city. Uh, Bangalore is a tabletop city which is to say uh, the center part of the city is also the highest point in Bangalore and the uh, city uh, slopes uh, downwards um, in all uh, directions. So in absent all the groundwater pumping and recharge and all of it, uh, you would expect that the water table at the center of the city would be the deepest. Right? And at the uh, periphery of the city, uh, you would have shallow uh, aquifers. And you, you actually have exactly the reverse. Right? So this is the anthropogenic flip that has happened in the last 40-50 uh, years in uh, Bangalore. And uh, that's a result of this uh, uh, particular uh, hydrology uh, playing out. Right? I can, I can uh, sort of give you numbers, but I thought I'll uh, do this uh, on the uh, map. So uh, it, it took us a a number of months to uh, do a distributed uh, groundwater model for reasons that I'll get into because we don't fully understand uh, groundwater uh, extraction rates as we speak. Uh, we've been uh, trying to measure uh, this more systematically uh, across uh, Bangalore. Uh, but when our sort of groundwater models were not uh, converging, just to give you a sense of why all hydrology is uh, social hydrology, I was walking along my uh, institute uh, road. Uh, on the other side of the institute are also uh, a line of uh, marriage halls, I mean, where uh, big fat Indian weddings uh, take place uh, during uh, the uh, wedding uh, season. And out of curiosity, I just went in and uh, tried to figure out what a wedding uh, hall might be uh, consuming. Right? A, a typical two-day Indian wedding, uh, an upper middle class wedding in uh, Bangalore, uh, consumes anywhere between 600 and 800 kiloliters of water. Right? So that's, that's the total uh, water that is consumed in a wedding. And, 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 and the story here is that when we uh, sort of very quickly aggregated all the wedding halls and uh, put that, shut that in, our models started converging. Right, so uh, in, 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 in a sense, uh, 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 this is really uh, social uh, hydrology. Uh, I mean, this is an animation that doesn't show up on uh, uh, PDF, and I could have shown you exactly month by month uh, changes in uh, uh, groundwater levels. But this is really the most important uh, consequence. Right, this is the uh, groundwater quality uh, map for uh, Bangalore. Uh, the uh, red colored uh, areas are basically aquifers that are dead uh, for all uh, practical purposes. They are not going to be uh, available for uh, uh, any kind of human use in the next uh, six, eight hundred, uh, how many hour, uh, years. Uh, yellow uh, aquifers are uh, okay, fit for uh, non portable uh, users. So the only groundwater in Bangalore uh, uh, with possible portable users are the ones in uh, blue. Right. So, what is, it, the, what is the yellow one? Yellow one uh, are uh, contaminated, but non-portable users possible. Non-portable. Uh, basically, uh, anything uh, beyond drinking and cooking. Uh, okay. Okay. I'll wind up in uh, three to four minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. So this, this is the uh, sort of basic uh, uh, social hydrology against which our infrastructure uh, decisions are uh, being made. I mean, just to give you uh, some evidence that social hydrology actually happens, uh, I'm giving you well measurements that shows how in the center part of the city uh, water tables have uh, actually been uh, rising. Uh, 
This is just simple hydrology. So anybody who's uh, been to Tokyo, uh, for example, will uh, immediately uh, recognize so much of the city lives underground. Right? There's so much of the infrastructure that is uh, underground. For a number of years, they had stopped uh, groundwater pumping in the city to uh, prevent uh, groundwater uh, exhaustion. And as a result, the water table started rising. And today what they do is actually have uh, four or five big pumps that pump out water into the sea, otherwise uh, their uh, rising water tables would uh, uh, endanger their uh, uh, infrastructure uh, there. So the usual reasons that are uh, uh, branded out uh, are, are re really a direct uh, simple consequence of what uh, uh, hydrology uh, is about. Uh, and I'll, I'll, and I'll uh, end with this. This is uh, some work that uh, uh, my uh, colleagues have been doing and now uh, I'm uh, working with uh, them to extend uh, uh, this work. So a lot of this data comes from uh, one of the uh, largest uh, water surveys uh, conducted in Asia. We surveyed 30,000 uh, households in uh, 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 Bangalore. Uh, there is uh, there, there's a story about uh, social mobility and uh, social hydrology, right? In, 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 in terms of if you wanted to understand the uh, reason why certain parts of the city you see uh, high social mobility and other parts of the city you don't see uh, social mobility, one of the factors is simply where you begin your uh, life as a squatter in the uh, city, right? So if you, if you started your life in a slum uh, which is sitting on a shallow aquifer, uh, one of the first things uh, that uh, you do is uh, get the local corporator to uh, start a uh, groundwater uh, uh, utility, a micro utility. Well, we talked about one large public utility. Bangalore actually has at least a few thousand micro utilities, right? Neighborhood scale utilities run by uh, corporators. And, and this, is, this is sort of the usual route to formality and also route to uh, social mobility. Right, so all, these are the sorts of uh, context in which uh, PPP is uh, coming in. The other context that you can actually price water simply grows against uh, the grain of uh, the empirical reality. Right? I mean, I'm, I'm making a, a purely empirical uh, case here. Right? I mean, so these are the different major sources of water in uh, Bangalore, in the domestic uh, sector alone, and I want you to focus on only the last two columns. <coughs> right? I mean, they, they represent a uh, percentage of households using that particular source with a marginal price information, and percentage of households with average price uh, information. If you don't have marginal price, uh, typically your PPP uh, isn't uh, interested, and 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 this has a lot of distributional consequences as well. And I mean, simply given how water is different from electricity, for example. And one of the reasons why uh, uh, poorer households pay much more for water, even uh, within households that only rely on piped water uh, supply, is simply because of the increasing block tariff. Right? Because water is supplied to a building and not to an individual household. Right? So poorer households have uh, higher density. So you have uh, the modal house dwelling unit in Bangalore is about six, six and a half households per uh, housing plot. Right? So you have a lot of people sharing uh, your monthly utility bill uh, so that by uh, the first week of the month you have already hit the highest uh, marginal cost. Uh, in, 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 in any event, I mean, so uh, the uh, basic picture that I wanted to uh, give you is that uh, any which way you look at it, hydrology, uh, economics, uh, it's, it's a complex uh, picture. Right? And, and, and uh, the public-private partnerships that are being proposed are essentially targeted at those sections, those parts of the city where marginal price information is available. Right? And, and, and that, that's, that's not a, uh, a large chunk of the city as uh, you can uh, see uh, from uh, here. I'll, I'll, I'll stop, I can, I can uh, sort of...